Hey, it is, uh, we're, it's in, we're December. It's December 2nd. And uh, boy, it's, this is great. A lot of rain here. Got cold. Who? finally, not, not sweating when I'm shooting the news. Um, and what, uh, boy, this has been a fun week around here. I mean, we had, uh, the, well, I just had, had a lot of, I actually had a lot of fun playing guitar, kind of revisiting Christmas songs. And um, I guess that's, I'm going to start with that. No, no, no. I'll come back to that. Oh, because I got some questions for you that I need help with. And, um, but uh, the week started off with, with a song that I, I thought like 10 years ago about doing a lesson on. And then just because a student started working on it, that's, that is how a lot of stuff happens around here. Somebody asked me, this happened just a couple of weeks ago with a, uh, it was a very good year. And, um, and then uh, I'll be home for Christmas. Anyway, so um, a Solon. A really cool little uh, contrapuntal instrumental that um, that uh, Noel Paul Stuckey put together back in 1963, and they did. And I remember, as a kid, this was like a this was a challenge. I, it wasn't it wasn't quite in the league of the three big challenges from the late 60s, which were and and. Uh, those were the songs that all of my guitar playing friends and uh, and ones who were like older than me that wouldn't talk to me because I was too young to um, were trying to play and so that's I always aspired to be able to play those 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 cool classic tunes from the early 60s and a solo was kind of one of those that hovered on the side burner but uh, when I re-listened to it a couple weeks ago because a student was asking about it, I thought, oh man, I gotta put a lesson up on that because it's just, it's a really cool tune. It's a great exercise. So I hope um, some of you have, or hope a lot of you have taken a look at it and kind of taken the challenge of piecing it together. So uh, that was one new thing this week. What else do we have? Oh, Nash brought us a lesson on an artist I was not at all familiar with, Johnny Logan, Hold Me Now. And, um, you know, here in the United States, Eurovision is a, is kind of a, an underground contest, songwriting contest that's been going on in Europe for decades. And, um, I, I, although I just remember reading something recently that we are going to be, Americans are going to be possibly able to vote on it in the near future. So, so it could be, could be taken, taken hold here a little bit, but. But uh, yeah, really, uh, really cool tune. So I encourage you to check out those the latest two things that we had. Um, let's see. I want to get to the Christmas question later. I want to talk about, oh, um, what else? No, I guess it's all sort of related. A couple cool things on the forum. Somebody asked about this. Because I've messed with this before, as you know. So I really appreciate those kind of questions and suggestions about what songs I should be doing, especially instrumental versions of. That's, of course, I'll Be Back by the Beatles. And, um, you know, I forget about some of these because many of them I recorded, put on CDs back um, 35 years ago. Yeah, it was the late mid, mid late 80s. Um, anyway. So uh, I will, I, I'm going to move that one back up the list because, and, and I do have it all written out in my book of, that after I did this album of Beatles tunes in, I think it was 88 probably, maybe 89, um, I, uh, I did put together a, a book of all the arrangements and um, that was actually very difficult because I didn't have any of them written down. I just made them up on the spot. They always came out a little bit, I mean, I practiced them, but they always came out a little bit different every time I played them. So then when I got requests from guitar players to send them the tab to what I'd been, what I played, I thought, oh, this, I had to painstakingly listen to every song and write down each little variation that I did on them. Anyway, so did finish that book and, and for a while, I don't know, sold, sold a few, maybe, maybe a couple dozen or maybe even a hundred of those uh, back in the day. So, um, but that does mean that those are all written out and um, that with a lot of lessons, that is the time consuming part of it is what am I going to, how am I going to write this out? I'm having that issue right now. I guess I'm going to, I'm going to siphon off into, um, when I, when I talked about getting a lesson together soon on, um, the 
the more I play it, the more I kind of like plan out the lesson, the more complicated it gets. And I have to remember sometimes to just dial it back and get something useful out there. That one is a lot closer now. Um, but I did this with um, Auld Lang Syne a little bit and, and a couple others lately. Oh, and way back, Unforgettable, I think was the first one of these, that um, I'm going to put it out there f with a couple of different stages. And if you want to take the, try to put together your own arrangement with the first stage, you could just print up the, the melody and the chords, what we call a lead sheet. And then try to put together your own um, take your own version of it. Um, and I did finally finish this just yesterday in terms of what the attachments are going to be. And it'll include um, just the melody with the chords over it, and then a second one that has how I would finger the chords. But I'm not going to go to the to the length to write out all of the filler stuff that I'll do in there. Oh, anyway, I'm going to explain it in there, but. But I really planned on having that lesson done a little while ago, and um, it just kept getting... Uh, I kept wanting to fine-tune a lot of stuff. So I appreciate your patience when I tell you that here, here's what I'm working on, and maybe I'll play that a little bit later. Well, no, I'll save that for later. It should be out soon. Um, but on to Christmas. I do want to... Um, I, I, we... Where am I, where am I going with this? Um, I've been thinking about other tunes that could be added to the Christmas collection. And um, I'm not always sure whether I've done the instrumental versions of, of some of these because there are a lot of them now. Um, you know, we had we got like six packs of just Christmas instrumentals and a couple packs that include sing-along versions. And I'm pretty sure I have not done, and you could help me out with this. I'm gonna play a couple, bits and pieces of a couple of songs that I don't think I ever did instrumental versions of. And that's gonna lead me to asking you to what other Christmas tunes would you like to see arrangements of? Because I probably mentioned a long time ago that that um, back in the early 80s, I, I, pl I played a lot of these um, because of this gig at Macy's playing for five hours a day, 12 days in a row. So stuff like this. <laughs> key switch keys badly anyway um i guess i should practice these things before i just decide to blast into them that's one i haven't played it well never mind no excuses but um so i don't think i've ever written out an arrangement for that but i think i did a vocal version of it or i'll save that one for last um i don't think i ever did one of this either better, don't you? Okay, I 
got to write that one down. Do a lesson on it, huh? Um, the um, one of the tips I wanted to kind of get to today was. If you're, if you're trying to put together an instrumental arrangement of something, you need to have a really clear idea of the, the, the harmony, the chords, and the melody independently. And um, like lately, a couple of my students have been, not lately, this happens all the time, have been playing songs that have very complicated picking going on in them and then singing over it. Stuff like um, Diamonds and Rust, uh, Poetry Man, um, some Neil Diamond songs that, uh, that Fred was working on. Anyway, and... They all needed the same path, which was, if you've got some really elaborate picking going on in something, uh, and you have to keep that going and sing at the same time, a really good plan is practice just strumming it. Anyway, so break it down into um, a little less uh, less things doing it going on at the same time, and just uh, so that kind of gets me back to making sure when you play a song. I've had a lot of students working on some classical pieces lately that uh, where it, it's not clear to them that you're just playing chords like E minor and A minor. and B7, and E minor. So, um, now, to, to take that to a Christmas tune that I don't think I've done an arrangement of, if you knew the chords were just this, be enough for you to even know what song it is yet but it might be but if I was going to try to put together an arrangement of that first of all I would have a steady bass going like this and I would be I would practice playing the melody by itself then I would try to think about oh, kind of like in soul in a solon okay this is what the bass is going to do so I just have to do those two things at the same time Back when I was younger doing these things, and they were really, in, and just kind of getting the hang of it, I would have to write them out. I'd, so, that's what I'm suggesting. Write out the melody, figure out what bass notes go with what melody notes, and pretty soon you might come up with this. Let's see where this goes. That would make a good um, good lesson, huh? Start working on it first, and then I, I might get to it a little bit later too. Uh, let's see what else. There was a great question on on the forum a, a week or so ago. Sorry, I didn't get to talking about this last week about buying a guitar. This you're right, um, uh, Brom I think asked this, and um, but did come up with the point that this could be a long story. I want to make it a relatively short story, but um, you, you got to do a lot of research. There was a, a part of the question was the difference between a 12 and a 14 fret guitar. Um, believe it or not, it's mostly the tone because what you get in a shorter guitar is the bridge is situated not uh, more exactly in the center of the biggest part of the soundboard. And that gets you a different sound. So because the neck would be shorter, the bridge would be a little further back here. And as you can see here, it's closer to the sound hole than it is to the, the bottom of the guitar. On a 14, I mean on a 12 fret guitar, that's not the case. So that's one thing that makes a difference. Question about 
finger picking guitar versus a strumming guitar. That mostly has to do with neck width. On a finger picking guitar, you usually want it to be a little bit wider. This guitar and guitars that are um, generally a finger style player wants a, a, a nut width of one and three quarters inches. And a, a dreadnought, like a Martin dreadnought, is smaller. It's one and 11 sixteenths. That means the strings, it doesn't seem like much, but that sixteenth of an inch means the strings are in each other's way. Not a big deal if you're just strumming chords or playing a melody. But when you're trying to do and keep all the notes clean at the same time, it gets troublesome. So that's the that's the wider neck wider neck width story. Um, somebody else had a question about I've got big fat fingers. What should I do? Get a classical guitar with an even wider neck width. Go with nylon strings, especially as a beginner. Starting with nylon strings is a good idea. The idea of a hybrid guitar, I believe Taylor makes a nylon string guitar um, that's kind of outfitted with steel string standards, meaning the slightly, uh, the classical guitar, by the way, has a really wide neck width, up to two inches, um, or one and seven eighths. I know my Santa Cruz guitar, which happens to be right here, is one and 13 sixteenths. So it's even a little wider than this. Get off the, the neck width thing. Um, anyway, so all of that is stuff to consider when you're when you're looking for a guitar. Um, you know, I found many years ago, before I bought this Santa Cruz guitar, I should show it to you since it's sitting right here. Wait a minute, it's, it's not in tune probably. Oh, let's see here. But, um, oh, not too bad. Been sitting in this cold room for a couple of days. Um, the guitar I had before this was a Martin HD 28, really narrow uh, nut, um, nut, nut width. And um, when I first played one of these, I thought, oh my God, this is, it's making possible things like, uh oh, let me think, why do you do this? Alternate the bass. Anyway, you get the point. But that was a much, uh, I've been messing with that for years, always struggling with it with on the uh, narrower nut guitar. And man, as soon as I tried it on this guitar, I was like, wow, I can play that song now. And the strings don't get in each other's way. So, uh, okay. Strings are a little dead on this, this thing though, too. Okay, let me see if there's anything else I was I meant to talk about today. I don't think so. I think I would really like some suggestions on, um, you know, other Christmas tunes to arrange. And many of the the songs coming out with solo arrangements now are going to sort of be progressive, sh sort of showing you the thought process of what I'm going through. I didn't, I'll even tell you one more story about the... Uh, um, so many versions of this that I, I'll probably tell this story in the lesson too, but I'll, but you can get a preview of it. Um, I was uh, mystified or confused as to the, what, how I wanted to do, oh, I talked about this in the, in the sing-along lesson, I think, but the, that I showed more how, how kind of Elvis did it. But um, the, uh, I tracked down music probably after, I can't remember now. Um, I was looking, I wanted the original music. What did the um, composers intend? 
and it was written in 1943. And so when I started searching for it, I could buy all kinds of sheet music for it from Sheet Music Plus, Music Notes. There are a bunch of places that will sell you sheet music. And I thought, man, how am I going to find the original that um, Walter Kent and Kim Gannon did because it had been doctored up over so many years by lots and lots of different people. And um, in that search, I found a, a link to the Library of Congress and was able to download they, what they submitted in 1943, their, their piano arrangement with even guitar chords over it and all that kind of stuff. And it was just, I thought, wow, this is the gold mine. This is what I was looking for. What, what did they intend? And it was, frankly, really disappointing. They had some terrible choices as far as chords went. Okay, get off the soapbox. Um, I think that is it for today. Um, all the rest of December, I should be here on most Fridays and uh, bringing you, I don't know, reports from TG Central here in sunny, today sunny, Northern California. And I will uh, keep working on tunes for you. That's it for today. <laughs>